In this video, I'm going to talk about the loss of smell that occurs for some people when they develop COVID-19. So I'll go over how it happens. So first off, what you should know is that uh, health of the person seems not to matter. So loss of smell due to COVID appears to be similar among people who are, you could be very fit, you could be unfit and normal weight or overweight, or you could be very unhealthy and obese or morbidly obese. And all can lose smell. So how does it work? Well, scientists have kind of figured it out. There have been a fair amount of papers that have talked about it. You can see here. Here is the, the virus. It enters the smelling system, and it inhibits the smelling system. Anosmia means loss of smell. So that's what you'll see there. Here's another paper. Loss of smell in COVID-19, the mechanisms. Massive transient damage. Now, this is like in like not damage like a break a bone or a break a, or break your skin open. It's it's physiological damage of the 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 epithelium refers to surface cells. And in this case, these surface cells they sense odors. And then this is the paper that I'm going to show you the picture from. So again, loss of smell in COVID-19. So there's lots of papers on it. Well, how does it work? Well, this paper this particular paper shows us, this is called the, the, well, the olfactory epithelium. Here you can see it again, the language. Look at the different cells, lots of different cells. Like, you know, like, and don't worry if you've never seen it before. To be, I mean, frankly, I had no idea. I, I forgot, I learned this years ago, but I forgot that there were these sustenticular cells or microvillar cells. But let's look at the different cells. So you see sustenticular, microvillar, these are your smelling cells. These are nerve cells, neurons that sense odors. And you have here these progenitor cells. These are olfactory smelling stem cells. So you have stem cells and muscles called satellite cells. And so we got stem cells that participate in the regeneration of old cells on an ongoing basis. So it works by the the sustenticular cells, they're the ones that get screwed up. So the, the aquamarine looking, those are sustenticular. And you can see they contain this enzyme called ACE2. It stands for angiotensin converting enzyme number two, because there's also a one. So the way the virus enters all cells is through this protein or enzyme. Now you can see why the virus does not get into the actual smelling neurons, the smelling cells, these orange guys, because there's no ACE2 enzyme in those smelling neurons. You have the ACE2 enzymes in the sustentacular cells and in the stem cells. So let's just, and, and, and oftentimes when you get a paper like this, it's explained in language that is not that horrifically complex for the average person who doesn't have much science background to understand. So here are your cells, and don't worry, you can just call them whatever cells. They're just called sustentacular cells, whatever. So the sustentacular cells express the enzyme, and the enzyme is the, a protein by which the, the coronavirus enters all cells. So in the nasal area is the sustentacular cells that are infected first, so when we impair the sustentacular cells, it impacts the function of the smelling cells right here. So let's look at this. So you can see leading to inhibition of odor perception cascade right here. So as a consequence of the sustentacular cells that I'm circling right now being infected, they will then cause inhibition of the smelling cells. So smells come in here, and if you infect the, ace, infect the sustentacular cells, they inhibit the smelling cells, as you can see right here. And that means that the smell will not get through and then get up into your brain so you can sense the smell. So you have the ACE2 enzyme protein, you know, it's a protein, it's an enzyme, so the ACE2 protein is found in the stem cells, the progenitor stem cells, and in the sustentacular cells. So look what happens. So I am the deflamed nutrition guy. So rapid immune responses occur 
in a subset of these smelling cells, as well as these microvillar cells. So you get an inflammatory reaction. This leads to activation of the immune cells, the lymphocytes and macrophages. They enter this olfactory epithelial area here, and they release pro-inflammatory cytokines, and that mucks up the work and prevents the smell. At least that's how this seems to work. So the stem cells, which are again these progenitor cells, may potentially explain why a small fraction of COVID-19 patients experience long-term, so osmia means smell, dys means abnormal smell. It's because the stem cells that contain ACE2 become compromised, and this then prevents the regeneration of the other olfactory epithelial cells and prevents smell from working properly. So hopefully that was not too confusing. Uh, in the case of lung problems, fluid buildup, uh, that's much more common in people who are obese and hyperglycemic because of the way the this enzyme, this protein, becomes sugar-coated. It does not seem to work that way for, for loss of smell. So you can see this is from that same paper. Here's their conclusion. Thus, excessive systemic inflammation, as in obesity or hyperglycemia, that impacts the brain is unlikely to pay a big role in the smell loss. It really has to do with the dysfunction that occurs as a consequence of the sustentacular cells and the stem cells called progenitor cells. So this happens no matter if you're lean or not. But if you are overweight or obese, the situation, of course, gets worse because multiple other organ systems can be affected, as in the lungs. So this video I did back in September uh, discusses the ACE2 protein slash enzyme and how it leads to, it becomes dysfunctional and uh, or the system, the lung becomes, the lung cells become dysfunctional and fluid accumulates. And, uh, and previously, we should also know, if you had not seen my videos before, that obese people are the primary COVID vectors, lots of evidence for that, and they are the key super spreaders, if you want to use this word, because they, obese people, stay infected and contagious about 100% longer than lean people. This, of course, is not an issue. Well, it likely is an issue for smell, because the longer you're infected, the greater the chances for the virus to get into the olfactory system, but it is not a requirement. So if you are obese, the whole situation can get worse. And in that case, it would be good to score a copy of this book that I wrote, this book, and this book. And if you like individual copies from Amazon, otherwise multiple copies are available at DFlame. Of course, right now you're watching, listening to the YouTube, so you can like and subscribe there, and follow also on Twitter and Facebook if you head over to DFlame.com. As I mentioned before, volume discounts are available for all the books via the DFlame website.